Hello friends from all around the world, thank you so much for watching this video. I am Max Carton and today I'm going to give you some tips on making your pedal board sound awesome. So when you are building a awesome pedal board like this one, there are two categories that you need to worry about. The first one is the signal chain and the second one is the power to your pedals. So what I mean by signal chain is not necessarily the order of your pedals, but it has a lot more to do with the quality of your signal throughout the chain. And what I mean by that is that some pedals really tend to suck the tone and they get rid of a lot of high end. And that is because they have some type of buffer. They are going through a little bit of the circuit that is really loading it down. And that is not something that you want in a pedal board. You really want when you have all your pedals off that it is exactly like plugging straight into your amp, in my opinion at least that is. So here are a few tips to keep your signal chain nice and clean. So the first tip is to stay away from too many boss pedals. And the reason for that is because in their bypassed state, they really tend to suck a little bit of the tone. So I would suggest not going above three or four boss pedals. And if you do, please use some sort of buffer. And what that is going to do is it is going to help you with the highs that are lost with this type of buffer or whatever the bypassed state is that these boss pedals have because it really tends to suck a bit of tone if you have a lot of them. And the second tip is using great quality cables and that doesn't have to be very expensive because these rock board cables are really awesome if you don't like to the solder. They are just a few bucks and they do the job really nicely. Way better than those really cheap colored ones that suck all of your tone and um, just suck in general. What I personally like to do is I like to get some cable like this. This one is Summer Excel cable. I will put a link in the description below for this. And then I cut the cable to length and I just use my soldering iron and I use some awesome uh, pancake plugs or some normal plugs, whatever I have lying around. And this is really for me the best way because if you are going to buy some MXR or whatever patch cables, it tends to cost you a lot of money. And with these, you can make the length as large as you want and you can just solder them and it is just cheaper and better in my opinion. Another tip in general is also just to keep your signal chain as short as possible. That will really help with a clean signal. And also if you want to get a really big board and you're not going to use a looper switcher, you really need some type of buffer because what that tends to do is that tends to change out the impedance and it makes it in a way that your signal is going to be able to travel a lot further than if it didn't have that buffer. So the next topic we're going to talk about is power. You really need some nice and clean power for your pedals. And in this case, most of you guys will recognize this visual sound or true tone one spot. It is basically a single power supply that delivers a high amount of current. And then you can use this one to daisy chain to a lot of pedals. But this guy is not always that great. It is really good when you're only using analog pedals, but the minute you start to add some digital pedals to the party, it really tends to give you some kind of buzzing and some kind of beeping. And then you might want to change out for a nice, isolated power supply like this T-Rex Fuel Tank Junior. And what this guy does is basically it isolates the power to several different outputs so that you have different supplies for different pedals so that they really don't end up giving you a lot of problems with some weird sounds. This one is great, but it does have some limitations also. It only has 100 milliamperes per output and you really want to be checking out a little bit more if you are a Strymon guy or if you want those really nice high-end boss pedals or if you want those really nice Eventide pedals. And this can also only deliver 9 volt like this guy. So the minute you want to try out some 18 volt or some 12 volt, this is going to be a little bit less um, great for that situation. So the next step up in terms of power is this one spot CS Pro device. I really would suggest you trying out a CS7 or a CS12 because for the price, they have really an 
awesome amount of current and they are switching power so what that means is that you can put in any power from 100 to 250 volts and you're going to be set and that is a really awesome thing i think that voodoo labs are really asking a lot more money and they give you a lot less in terms of milliamps to this guy and this has a lot of current so i would suggest this guy but if you want a strymon power supply it is awesome if you want a Friedman power supply, I would really suggest it. If you want the Voodoo Labs, it is great. But again, this is really better than that in my opinion. So guys, please don't forget to like, dislike, comment in the comment section down below. Subscribe to the channel and then we'll see you guys next Sunday.